What's up, everybody? This video, what, we're, what are we gonna be doing? We are going to begin programming our maze solver application. Now, if you're following along, you probably have this MySuite program. We're gonna ignore that. We're gonna create a new project for everything maze solving related. And yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. So the previous video we did talked about uh, the theory behind this, so how it's going to work. Also some practice with multi-dimensional arrays because we're going to be using those to represent our maze. So I would encourage you to check out the previous video if you haven't watched that, just to get that foundation. And this video is gonna be hands-on, we're gonna code it. It'll probably take this video, another video, and maybe a third video, just depending on how much depth we go into. And then we'll, we'll go from there. So hopefully you guys are excited. I'm gonna try to go pretty in depth. And by the end of this, you should have a pretty good understanding of how stacks work, a little bit on backtracking, multi-dimensional arrays, and just some general good programming principles. So yeah, and it's also your job to watch out for bugs because I'll probably have some in my software as most people do, so yeah. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click new Java project. Project name, we're just gonna call it maze solver and finish. Don't create. All right, now when you right click this, there's this team here. And what you can do is you can disconnect. So that's because I already have Git source control that I'm doing on my own. That's like some automatic thing with Eclipse. There might be a way to disable it in the menus, when, but I just clicked finish so it appeared. So if you wanna get rid of that, that's how you do it. So then what you do now is you right click new class, and this is where we're going to have our main method where the code is going to enter, and we're just gonna call this maze solver. Beautiful. So now, if we want to do our own source control, you can use git. So when you say git status, you should have this maze solver folder and the file inside of that. I will be pushing this up to GitHub so you can access the code when I'm done. So that's at github.com slash Caleb Curry slash 30 days of Java. All right, so I'm gonna to try to take this step by step, but there is a lot of pieces, so make sure you pay attention and I'll try not to mess anything up too bad. So when we are working with static void main here, this main method, oftentimes people will want to break things out into their own methods. And when you do this, you have two options. One, you can make them static, so they're just associated with this maze solver class. Or two, you can make them instance methods. And in that situation, you have to make an instance of this maze solver class. If you're not super fluent with object-oriented programming, don't worry, you can just follow along, but just know that those are two options, and I think I'm going to go with these static methods just for this simple project. If I was doing something more complicated, I might try to break things out using instance methods or whatever, but in this situation, I feel like static methods are going to work best. So what do I mean by that exactly? We're just going to, uh, we're gonna show you. So for example, if I want to store a maze in our program, I can put it here. So I'll call it maze, I'll make it an integer array. I have the option of leaving it like this, or I can say static. When it's static, I can access it from main here, and I'll show you that in a minute. But first, we need to actually give some data to this maze, so here's what we're gonna do. We're just going to put a couple different rows in here, and just fill it with some data, ones and zeros. You can follow along. I would recommend to, to copy it exactly as I have it. And what we're going to do is we're going to have another position. So here's the coordinates. We're gonna have zero, sorry, the key. We have zero, one, and then we have two, which is the destination. So one of these needs to be the destination. So let's say, let's say we start here we go down this way, we go right this way, down this way, then let's say this is one, you go this way, this way, <laughs> up, left, and then up, and then this is the destination. So that's the final maze we're going to do, and we'll start in this corner. So zero is a wall, and one is a path. So that's the key, so you'll follow this to know which spots you can go in and which spots you cannot go in. The goal here is to find two. And the way we're gonna do this is we're just going to start here 
and we're just going to try every possibility. And if a possibility doesn't work, we're going to mark it off of our list and say, this is not a potential solution. Don't go down this path again. So that's that. And what we can do is we can access this maze in, inside of main by saying maze dot and you see the members here. And that's because it's static. If it wasn't static, it wouldn't work. In this situation, you type maze dot and nothing happens. In this situation, you'd have to create an instance of this maze solver class. And I don't want to deal with that right now. So I'm going to leave it as static. I think that's the easiest and the easiest to follow. So the next thing we're going to need a path and we're going to use a stack data structure. So we talked about stacks earlier videos in this series, but basically it's first in last out. So like a stack of plates, the one on the bottom is the first one to get added and it's the last one to come out when you start taking the plates off. So you can represent a stack using numerous different collections. We're going to use a linked list. You could use a custom collection. You could find one that exists that you can use for this, whatever you want. So to do this, we're going to say linked list and the type, I'll get to that in just a second. And this is going to be called path. So this is going to keep track of the path we take and we'll just say new linked list parentheses. Now inside of the less than and greater than symbols is where we put the type of data we want to store. And there's basically the question, how do we represent a position, right? Because if we want to say we started here, we went this way or this way, whatever it is, how do we represent that in a data type? We could use a string, so it could be X followed by Y, or we could use some number, or, or whatever we want it to be. But I actually think the best way to do this would to be using a custom type. So for that, we're going to create a class. And this will be some good object-oriented programming experience if you don't have that. So what you can do is in this type, you could say position. So that's the type that we're trying to store. We're just going to have a linked list of positions. And when you hover over position, there's an option create class position. Click that and looks good finish and it pops up up here and we're going to have two instance variables not static and it's going to be public int x and public int y so that's going to keep track of the position so let's talk about oh, also you need to hover over linked list and import linked list from java.util that'll show up as an import statement up here so let's talk about how we add positions because we're going to need to put the starting position right away. So inside of main, what we can do is what we, we just say position, give it some name such as P and say new position. Then you can assign values. So P dot X and uh, I spelled position wrong there. P dot and there's X and Y. So what is X and Y? Well, on a coordinate system, X goes this way and Y goes this way. So X is going, oh, <laughs> X is going to be the column. Y is going to be the row. So if we're going to start here and it's zero based, we are on column zero, one, two, three. So X is going to be three. Y is going to be zero because we're in that very first row. So P dot Y is zero. Then all we have to do is say path dot add and pass in P. We'll see what the issue is here. We need to make path static, similar to how we made our maze static. If we're going to access it directly in here without creating an instance of this maze solver class, then it has to be static. And we're gonna use static throughout this. Now this is nice, it works, but I think there's a cleaner way we can do this and that is with a constructor. So what we could actually do is go into the position class and say public position. And this is a constructor, it's a method that's going to be invoked when we create a new position object. And it's gonna take two arguments, int x and int y. And inside of here we can assign these variables to the instance variables up here by saying this dot x equals x and this dot y equals y. So when we prefix it with this, it refers to this one here. When we don't prefix it with this, it refers to this one here. 
So this is how we reference the instance of the object that has been created. Now, I don't think you have to have this. I think it'll just do it intelligently. Uh, okay, you actually do. Sorry guys. <laughs> so make sure you put this on the left hand side or make sure one of these has a different name. So you could capitalize one or you could use an underscore or just call it something else. But I just like to prefix it with this because it's super clear. Now, the only way we can create a position is if we pass in X and Y. So we can say three and zero. Get rid of these here. And then this does exactly the same thing. So you can imagine if a mouse is walking through this maze trying to find the cheese, it's gonna start at this position and it's going to go from here. And it can either go left or it can go down. Either one is fine. If it goes left, it's going to add that new position to the stack and then realize it cannot go anywhere else. So it's going to pop that position off the stack. So we basically backtrack to where we started, which is right here. And now it knows not to go left, so it goes down. Then this position will be added to the stack and the same thing happens. It goes down, this will be added to the stack. And all of these positions get added to the stack until we get to the destination. And then we have just a sequence of positions that describe how we found the cheese or the whatever we're trying to find inside of this maze. The code I'm gonna show you is actually really simple. It's just, you have to think about it right and don't do extra work. I see a lot of people trying to code in which direction this mouse or this person traveling this maze is facing. That really doesn't matter to us as long as we keep an overview perspective of this maze. We're looking down on this maze this direction is always left to us, and this direction going from here to here is always down for us. So we don't have to worry about if they go down if they're facing a certain direction. I don't know why people put that in there, but I've seen that, and we're not gonna waste our time doing that. So we're gonna get this pretty quickly. Now, a big question is how do we keep track of where we've been, right? Because if we're on this maze and we go left and we realize, oh, that doesn't work, we go back. A computer's stupid. A computer doesn't remember that it already went left. So it'll say, oh, there's a one, let's go left. Oh, that doesn't work, let's go back. Oh, there's a one, let's go left. Oh, that doesn't work, let's go back. And we'll just keep doing that in an infinite loop. We do not want that. So we need a way to basically tell the computer to remember that this does not work. And the easiest way to do that is to change the maze value from a one to a zero in our code. When we do that, it's no longer going to see it as a path, but a wall. That way we know it doesn't go anywhere useful. Now, one thing I just realized, and this is a good thing I caught, I don't wanna use add here. I want to use push because these do two different things. If you see add versus push, add adds it to the end of the list and push adds it to the beginning of the list. If we're gonna use this as a stack data structure, we always want to add to the beginning of the list. So when we use push, it goes to the front of the list and everything else is scooted over. So to mark where we've been in the maze for the computer's memory, all we have to do is mark that spot with a zero. Now in order for us to mark a specific spot in the maze as visited, we need a way to look at the most recent position in our path. And the way to do that is you say path.peak. And looking at this, it does not remove the element but it does give us the, the first element of this list. So that's going to be the starting position right now. And when we do this, it's going to ret return a position object. And then we can just say X to grab the X element or Y to grab the Y element. That X and Y is used to tell where in the list so we can use that for coordinates to mark it as a zero. So I'll show you guys that now. What we'll do is we'll just say maze, index x, index y, and we'll set it to zero. Inside of those squares, we're going to use path.peak.x, and then again, path.peak.y. So in theory, that should work. And we're going to debug this, but let's just make sure we don't have any problems. It looks like we don't have any problems, so we should be good, but let's debug it and just take a look at what happens when we get to this line. This will give us local variables, but actually all we need to do is we just need to hover over that maze object and it'll tell us the values. 
So right now we have 2011 for the first row, 1101, and 0111. We want to mark that first position as a zero, and we're starting right here. So after we take this line, we'll see if that value changes. So just click step over. And another little issue I noticed here is we actually want to switch these. We want the Y on the left and the X on the right because this first index is going to refer to the row, which we labeled as Y, so going up or down. And then the next one refers to the column, which is X. So I think that's what we want. So let's set that breakpoint here and debug. So when we get to this point, we can hover over maze and see that the first row is 2011. And when we make a step going back to maze, you can see the new value is 2010. So it worked. That is how you keep track of the places you visited inside of the maze. So just to conclude a little bit real quick, we started with this maze, we created a linked list to use as a stack to store our path, and we label each position we visited with a zero. And we are doing this with this custom position object, which allows us to store an X and a Y, X for the column and Y for the row, which is why Y is on the left here, because the row goes in the first box and the column in the second box. So far, so good, but I think that's a good stopping point for today. Make sure you understand all of the code here and are up to speed. I will take this and I'll commit it to the repo. So we'll say git add. We'll say basics of maze and I'll say git push origin master. So that's our introduction to the maze solver. I think we still have a lot of work to do because we haven't even got the, the actual movement down, but we did get a pretty good solid foundation, so I'm excited. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Please be sure to subscribe and stay tuned.